Jufus, I bought a Ryzen system. I have frame stutters everywhere. I get maybe like 50 FPS in Warzone. Can you help me fix this? What did I do wrong? You listened to mainstream tech media, didn't you? Yes, I did. I didn't know any better. How can I fix this? All right, I'm going to tell you the secret to fixing your AMD system. Problem solved. Hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers, uh, the place where we test the fastest and ban the slowest. All right, guys, this is it. This is the one you've been waiting for. 10900K versus 5950X max overclock. A uh, couple of disclaimers here. Uh, one, the 5950X or maybe uh, Zen 3 in general performs much better with an all-core overclock this generation. Uh, I did PBO auto over, auto overclock, uh, all core overclock, and uh, all core overclock had way more FPS, like consistently way, way, way more FPS in games than PBO and auto OC. Uh, I would assume as just from the like the the game engines and uh, Windows scheduler, not having to dick around with the fastest core. They're all fast, you know what I mean? It, it, it makes, it's much better for games to have an all-core OC. Second disclaimer, the numbers that you're about to see are probably not attainable to you as the viewer. Uh, I don't really know how to word that. Like, if I were you, I wouldn't base your purchasing decision off the numbers that I'm posting here. Um, because you probably won't be able to overclock. No matter what platform you go on. You probably are not going to achieve the same FPS numbers that I am here. Regardless of the platform that you're on, right? This is, this is really what each platform can achieve at the very maximum of performance kind of thing. On, um, again, on a daily system. No chiller. No nonsense. They're both on custom uh, water cooling loops. Just a gener uh, general daily gaming rig, right? All the voltages here that I used are safe in, in my books that I would use for both platforms. So however high they could clock on their core speed, fabric speed, ring with safe voltages is exactly what I use for both systems. So anyway, number three disclaimer, I consider it a tie... Unless the CPU wins by like eight, nine, ten percent or more, kind of thing. Like it has to, it has to have like a good lead for it to be a win. If it's a five percent win, that's a tie in my book. That's disclaimer number three. And number four, the benchmarks that I use today are all like 540p and like 720p. Both of these CPUs are so fast that I have to actually crank down the resolution to 720p and 540p just to be able to like gap in the um like the FPS numbers. If you go 1080p or like 1440p 4K, all these numbers are a tie. Just, just ignore that shit. Like 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 moral of the story, spoiler alert here, they're both tied and exactly the same for most people. Like, pretty much. Without further ado, to the Batmobile, let's do some benchmarks. Um, I'm not gonna play music this time. I'm going to actually commentate as the, as the numbers go through. Because, uh, I did minimums and maximums as well. There's a lot of information to go through. So, I'm just gonna tell you what's happening as the, uh, as the benchmark roll is going. So, uh, let's head over and do that now. Not much to talk about here, guys. Just showing uh, the IDA64 memory benchmark for both systems. Uh, just to kind of give you a rough idea where these CPUs sit. Uh, feel free to pause the video and, you know, check out your own CPU against one of mine. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much where these both of these CPUs landed for uh, safe daily settings. Quick attention to the latency number difference, though. Even though, even though Zen has like 30% more IPC, it still has to wait 20 nanoseconds more per, per instruction, right? So, that's, 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 that's why Intel is still holding that crown. 
All right, first game up for grabs here, I guess. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p low, 50% render resolution. So this was actually done at 540p, and that was actually the only way I could get these CPUs to separate somewhat. So, I mean, with that said, uh, the win goes to AMD here, I guess you could call it. it it's a consistent 10F, like I ran, I ran the benchmark a few times, and it was consistently 10 FPS higher, so... It, it wasn't a margin of error there, so um, this game definitely does scale with cores and threads much better than uh, than clock speed, I would say. Uh, minimums, you're gonna see you're gonna see a trend uh, with the rest of these games where the minimums tend to be higher on Intel. Uh, the maximums tend to be way higher on Zen chips. My theory is on that though is. Just the Intel system is is better at keeping consistent frames, uh, just because it's monolithic, right? Whereas the Zen chip, sometimes it'll be able to hit that cache, and then it'll spike up, but sometimes it won't be able to hit that cache, then it'll just spike way down, right? Uh, that's my theory behind that, but if you're, if you're a minimum, if you want high minimums, you're definitely going to want the Intel system. Next on the list, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This is your classic Ubisoft unoptimized garbage. And this is pretty much what I was talking about in the video yesterday where I was saying if you're playing any kind of game that's kind of unoptimized, like pretty much every single Ubisoft game in existence ever, um, you just want the Intel system. It can pretty much just brute force any kind of shitty engine optimizations. Look at that low number. It's almost 30 FPS higher in the lows, right? Uh, average was 15% higher, so this was a huge win for Intel, like massive. The AMD just could not, just could not deal with that Ubisoft engine at all. But on the on the Ubisoft front here, check out Division Two. Like the, the game is so, you have like Valhalla on one hand, and then you have Division Two on the other hand, where it's so well optimized that the AMD chip has a massive win here, right, of 10%. So it's like. But, I mean, we all saw this coming. Pretty much every single, everyone, everyone knows that Division 2 is just insane with Zen chips for some reason. Uh, this game doesn't show minimums and maximums in the benchmark, so I didn't have any data there. But this game is definitely just, like, sponsored by AMD and optimized for AMD on every regard. So there, there's no excuse why... There's no excuse why games should run shittier on AMD systems. Like, they, sh they should run theoretically faster, because check this out. Like, like why does this game faster? And why is Valhalla slower, right? It's all just down to the engine. Not Windows, nothing else. Strange Brigade up next. Uh, this game I really, really, really like to use for CPU and GPU benchmarks. I feel like it's the most unswayable game that you can find out there. So if you have a Vega, if you have Pascal, Big Navi, Small Navi, Turing, Ampere, it doesn't matter what architecture you use for a GPU, this game scales with it perfectly. Like, absolutely perfectly. Um, on the CPU front, it seems to scale also equally perfectly, right? Which is just, however many cores and threads you throw at it, it uses them. Like, Strange Brigade is still probably my favorite game to use for benchmarking, just because... It can show you exactly what each system is theoretically maxim maximally capable of, I want to say. But um, this one's a tie. It's, it's the same shit either way, pretty much. So it kind of gives you a good good example of, like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's the same. It's a tie, right? Up next, we got uh, Horizon Zero Dawn here. Pretty much a tie across the board, but check out the minimums again, right? Uh, if, if you, uh, long story short for the summary of this video, if you are a single player, triple A console port, unoptimized game port, any kind of single player, triple A game, if that's your shtick for, for gaming, you're gonna want the Intel system again, just, just for those minimums, you don't want to be hitting 60 FPS for, for, for random dips and stutters and, you know, you don't want none of that shit, man. You just you just want those high minimums. Otherwise, though, these, this is a tie, pretty much, for, for both these chips. Not a win. Metro Exodus up next, and this one is literally a tie across the board. I don't know if it was a game engine, like, 
Like, it wasn't, it, the, the GPU wasn't at 100%, it was at 720p, but the CPU also wasn't at 100%, so I think this is just a game engine limitation, or possibly a limitation of that in-game built-in benchmark, I'm not sure, but the benchmark would indicate that these are literally identical to each other in that game for performance-wise. So, tie again. You're gonna see a lot of ties coming up. Watchdog Legion. This, uh, I mean, Ubisoft strikes again, so win for Intel, brute forcing that Ubisoft engine, that unoptimized garbage. Higher minimums, higher average, higher across the board. Like, I guess, I guess if you like, if you like those Ubisoft single player fetch for 40 hours type games, then I guess Intel is for you because it's just, you gotta brute force those shitty ass engines, man. And the big boy Warzone. Uh, I'm gonna give this one a tie just because. Just because a 10900K can, you know, get 10% higher max FPS. We still only have 360 hertz monitors, so pretty much across the board, it's a tie. Either of these CPUs will perform very well for you in Warzone. You're not going to see a difference at all. Uh, again, if you can max them both, or either, either or of these out like this, right? So, yeah, that's like, I mean, nothing really too exciting here for Warzone. I, I was actually... Really, really, really impressed that this CPU did this well in Warzone, though. This whole time, I was thinking that, uh... Like, I've seen other people's Zen 3 numbers with Warzone, and they were dog shit. But, like, mine performed extremely well. You just have to have that all-core OC, and you have to have that, that latency as low as possible. Uh, that's why Intel still kinda wins here. It, this is This is probably the most bandwidth and latency heavy game in existence currently on the market so the lower you can get your latency the higher you can get your memory bandwidth the more fps you will get in this game and that's just how it works on that note though if you do test your own zen system and you're using pbo or auto oc you will have god awful performance in warzone it does not like pbo at all you have to get it just it, it pings too many different cores at too many different times. You just have to have that all-core OC going for this game. For this game specifically, I want to say. Well, that's it. Okay, so three wins for Intel. One win for, uh... I'll, I'll give it Tomb Raider. Two wins for AMD, and the rest are tied. So... This video is pretty meaningless. <laughs> so, the biggest thought that I'm going to leave you with here... Yes, I would say, okay, let's just say for argument's sake, both platforms perform the exact same. I would say they do. Uh, the odds of somebody being able to get a 10900K that can go that fast is pretty rare. Uh, or my 5950X is pretty good as well. So even that's also pretty rare, right? So, but let's just, let's just say that they're tied for argument's sake. What would I recommend to my friends? The Intel system. And it's not, um... It's not a shill fanboy like thing. It's a ease of use thing. Like like first of all, why would you spend a thousand let's say double the price. You're spending double the price on a 5950X to maybe tie a 10900K, right? The platform is way buggier. I didn't even actually benchmark Cyberpunk because it's broken apparently, and you have to do a whole bunch of hex editing or some shit like that. There's there's too many there's too many game engine bugs and unoptimizations with Ryzen still. Four generations in, Intel just works, man. Like I know I know I know that's like an NVIDIA slogan, but it goes so far for people that just want a game. Like there's like, 90% of the people out there just want a game, dude. They don't want to spend four days dicking around with FCLK voltages and shit. You know what I mean? Like, like, like platform, ease of use, um, more picky about memory, more picky about motherboard selection, um, higher chance of getting a shitty bin, too, on the AMD side. Um, there, there, there's just so many layers of problems that you can encounter on uh amd system when an intel system you just put that shit in there 
and it works. And it works. You don't, there's not, that's it. That's it. You, like, you cannot put a value on something just working. On any game, it works on every single game, every emulator, every console port. It literally just works, guys. It just works. The counter arguments I will give AMD, though, are PCI Express 4.0 is pretty cool. Um, I just picked up a 980 Pro uh, SSD Samsung. It's fast, man. I'll do another video on that, but that, that thing is awesome. Uh, AMD gets the win for that one. Pro number two is power consumption, man. Those 16 cores draw, like, half as much power as the 10900K. So, like, like... You're, you're drawing way less power to get the same performance, right? And that, that's more of a personal preference thing, uh, depending on whether that matters to you or not. But you're still paying double for the chip, right? So is that it then? Intel still holds the crown, right? Game over, is that it? Ah, wait a second, my friend. We might have a new king. But I'm not done yet. Check out this little clip. Sorted. We'll be deployed shortly. Hostile dropping into the area. Watch the skies. The new King of War Zone has arrived. That's it, guys. Hit the subscribe button down below if you want to see the next video where we talk about SMT off testing. You're going to want to see that one. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Thanks for joining us. Comment down below if you have any questions for the testing methodology, uh, system specs, whatever, voltages. Ask away, I'll try and answer it. Uh, other than that, I'll be on Twitch tonight, 5.30 Pacific Time. Or you can ask me questions over there, and then I usually re-upload those to YouTube after. So if you want to ask me questions live, head over there tonight. I'll be over there. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.